Welcome back to the Spore Guy YouTube page. Thanks again for everybody tuning in. As always, we appreciate your feedback and we have more resources in the link in our bio. So go check that out. We'll jump right into it. Today's episode is all about Fresh Air Exchange, AKA FAE. Why is it so important? What benefits does it hold within the inner workings of mycology? Today we're gonna explain everything for you guys so that you understand better techniques on FAE, how to use it properly, when to use it, and overall its role in mycology. So fresh air exchange, also known as FAE for short, is the process of introducing oxygen and removing carbon dioxide. Very simple, fresh air exchange. You're bringing in good oxygen, you're getting rid of carbon dioxide, same thing as our body, that's how our body thrives. Same with mushrooms. Now when you bring that fresh oxygen in and you get rid of the carbon dioxide, you are actually going to induce the fruiting stage uh, for the mushrooms. So FAE is a crucial for the mushroom pinning process and overall throughout the rest of the life cycle of the mushroom itself. Okay, so how does it work? Why is more oxygen going to induce fruiting. Well, once your mushroom grain spawn is fully colonized, the next step is to transfer it to a bulk substrate. This stage requires careful air circulation to promote mushroom formation while maintaining proper humidity levels. Some common FAA techniques are, you know, manually fanning the grow chamber with the lid of the monotub. So you just take it off and wave it over the top of the monotub you know, a couple times throughout the day, maybe. Um, it's a little, you know, it's something most people don't want to do, but if you don't have all the resources, then it's probably the best option. Another would be using an oscillating fan on a timer, so it improves the air circulation within the room. And this way, you know, you don't even have to manually do anything. You just set the timer, fan goes on, fan goes off. So if you're using a grow bag technique, you can adjust the gussets, which, are essentially like those things on a coffee bag that you kind of just pinch down and it closes it. So you can adjust that to regulate more or less airflow to the grow bag. Maintaining the right balance between humidity and airflow can be a little bit tricky if you're new to it, but as time goes on, the more you do it, the more successful fruits you see, you'll start to understanding the balance. And there definitely is a difference in balance from working in a small room versus working in a bigger lab type setting. So it's not a one size fits all for how much fresh air exchange you should be focusing on. However, understanding the optimal fruiting conditions will definitely help with the entire process. So that goes more into the genetic history and the information available to you uh, on a specific genetic so that maybe you can understand, hey, maybe it doesn't need as much fresh air exchange or humidity, or some genetics certainly do. Psilocybe cubensis, for example, can tolerate lower fresh air exchange and uh, Penelia cyanescens actually requires high humidity and constant air circulation, which would call for having a more specialized humidification system and involved for the pan cyan. FAE should always be adjusted based on the setup that you're using, obviously, whether you're using the grow bags, monotubs, or a fruiting tent. They're different techniques, so they need different processes through the growing stages. To say there are no contamination risks while doing fresh air exchange would be a lie. While it is essential to introduce fresh air for growth, it also increases the risk of contamination. If your growing environment is not sterile, contaminants like the dreaded trichoderma green molds can quickly spread. So the best way to prevent any contamination would actually be to use a, the sealed bag grow technique. Um, instead of those open air monotubs, you know, the grow bag is essentially sealed. So nothing is getting in there. They have those filter patches on the front of the bag. So it does allow the air exchange to actually occur without opening or closing repeatedly to get that same type of result. You know, also keeping your environment very clean, um, you know, trying to avoid carpets in that area and definitely no pets 
um, will go a long way. Sanitizing a mono tub before every use would, you know, be pretty much standard practice if you're going that route. Like sanitation in general with all of these things is extremely important. You know, if you don't do it, you'll get green mold. Another is just making sure the balance of FAE is pretty constant with the humidity. Excessive air exchange can dry out the substrate and you know that just reduces the overall fruiting potential. And if I had to give you a side-by-side -side of monotub versus grow bag, I'll give it a better breakdown. So for fresh air exchange, there is higher contamination due to lid gaps and the drilled holes you'll be making to uh, are on the side where you put the cotton balls in. You know, there's just more area for things to be opened or not sealed properly. Um, for the grow bags, it's an adjustable, it's all adjustable and overall sealed. So you're not putting your hand in it. You're not taking, you know, opening it up and staring down it, letting a piece of hair fall in. It's just sealed and you observe from the outside of the bag. Uh, so that being said, the contamination risk is much higher with the monotubs versus the grow bag. As long as, you know, the beginning part of the grow bag sterilization process is thorough, you know, lower risk for sure. Humidity control is harder to maintain in a big monotub. There's more surface area. There's, it's a monotub with a lid on it. So essentially it'd be good for trapping humidity, but then you have to lift it and allow the fresh air exchange to happen, which if you don't time that right, could lead to the substrate drying out. Uh, with the grow bag, it's like a self-sustaining climate inside the bag. As long as there's FAE in the room, it's going to keep the temperature right for the fruits in the bag and the substrate. Overall, the ease of use, you know, the monotub, a lot of cleaning, a lot of manual aspects to it and the grow bag self-sustaining i'm all in grow bag here you can clearly tell it's uh it's it's an easier process for sure the humidity and the air circulation are the two most important factors that's why i'm comparing those uh, with the monotub and the grow bag and it will help you get that full canopy that everybody desires when it comes to this process the ideal fruiting conditions for cubes is a temperature right around the mid 70s. So 24 degrees Celsius to 26 degrees Celsius. The humidity level ranging from 80% to 95%. And the air exchange should be a steady and fresh airflow with no excessive drying. And a little warning, once you exceed 80 degrees Fahrenheit, the contamination risks do increase. So, you know, keep that in mind as uh, temperatures in the mid 70s reduce the chance. Another important thing to understand is field capacity. Uh, field capacity is directly correlated to the hydration of the substrate, which is critical for a healthy mycelium growth. So, you know, you're in the process. How do you actually test for field capacity? So the first thing to do is get your hands dirty. Grab a handful of that substrate, uh, squeeze it really gently, you know, like a palm-sized amount of substrate and give it a light squeeze. Water should slowly drip. It should not start pouring out like a, a steady stream. That means it's oversaturated. You wanna just give it a light squeeze, you know, it starts dripping. So if you're oversaturated with water on the substrate, you could actually add vermiculite to absorb the excess moisture and get you closer to that field capacity substrate. Proper hydration ensures water droplets settle on the surface, encouraging the pinning formation and preventing premature drying. You might be wondering if there's solutions for maintaining high humidity uh, without any type of mess. So for cubes, you can actually try to grow it without a casing layer. Uh, well, what is a casing layer, you might ask? A casing layer is a non-nutritious material added on top of the colonized substrate to help maintain high surface humidity. So it's good to know that you know cubes don't necessarily need them. Some common casing materials then would be uh, peat moss, vermiculite, or cocoa coir. But there are benefits to actually using a casing layer. It does help regulate moisture at the surface of the substrate. 
It enhances pin formation by trapping that humidity in, and it reduces the need for frequent misting because it's storing the humidity real nice. Once the substrate is fully kind of, that's a breakdown for FAE. I just got some final thoughts. So FAE is a, essential for triggering the fruiting conditions and increasing the outcome of your process. Monotubs allow for high fresh air exchange, but require that manual fanning and increased cleaning as well as potential contamination risks. The grow bags with the filter patches offer controlled airflow and reduce contamination risks uh, very well, I may say. Humidity and, air humidity and air circulation must be balanced to prevent the drying out or the contamination. Lastly, a casing layer improves moisture retention and it does, and if you do decide to use the casing layer, it does help improve the moisture retention depending what process you're using. So by dialing in your FAE and your humidity levels, you can really optimize your whole workflow with this and, you know, have mushrooms be much healthier and stronger. So thank you guys for tuning in and getting more information from us. We love sharing it with you. So we'll see you on the next one. Enjoy.